All right, I have a special episode today. Uh, we've got Don Barry Hill from Laser Coach on, and I'm I've been sitting here doing a little pre chat with him, and I'm just fascinated by all the things that um, we've already discussed because we, as people in the business who work across multiple industries who are now purchasing these laser equipment across their practice, it's not just med spas, it's, it's dentists, it's chiropractors, it's I'm literally seeing like optometrists coming to us now saying, you know, we need this machine and we've done this certain thing and now we have to get marketing for it. And then of course they call us when they they need the marketing. But, but Don is the one who sort of sees all of this and it's seen it for 20 years. And so Don, I want to ask you, obviously my biggest thing is what do you think of the laser business in general right now? Like what do you give us, give us your sort of like feeling about like, the good, bad, and the ugly about the laser, because I'm sure people who listen to this who've got lasers or are looking for lasers, you know, you see your vision of where it is and where it's been. Maybe you can give us a few minutes there. Boy, there's a lot of a lot of things we could talk about. Um, the laser industry has changed a fair amount since I first got into it, which was in '96. So I've seen this industry all the way through. I've seen all the changes. I'm, I'm you know, familiar with the big companies and how they work and how they operate. And I, you know, I see how they, they do their thing. I know what's, what goes on behind the curtains with them. Uh, the, the industry is kind of dominated by six or seven big companies right now, for the most part. Um, a lot, they, they tend to be very aggressive in their sales tactics, which is one of the main things I hear from people dealing with them is I got this rep calling me every day with, you know, and if we don't buy this week, it's going to go away and I'm blah, 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 and all this stuff. So these, a lot of doctors and med spa owners just think of these big companies because that's the names they recognize and they go to them. And then it's kind of like a battle, you know, and how this, this process goes and nobody has the second best laser. Uh, you know, everybody's pushing hard to sell these things and with physics and lasers and all this stuff, they can make these systems look like they are, you know, perfect for every imaginable treatment, you know, you can come up with. So lasers, lasers are the perfect example of the technology constantly in search of new applications. So any of these companies, if someone comes up with a, a toenail treatment, they're all, you know, most of them are going to say they can do it or ones that can't really do it are going to promote it for that and make you believe that, you know, it's going to work for that. But they can be very hard to deal with. And the biggest complaints that I hear from people dealing with these companies is uh, it was they don't know what they don't know. They get this information and, and they get this high pressure sales tactics and they often buy things for way more money than they need to. And they find out later, it's not really what they needed and they're not getting the service they want because these companies, they're high, they get a lot of pressure from management to say to make sales. So it's quarterly sales. What, you know, what are we going to hit today? What are we going to hit this week? What are we going to hit this month? Um, so it's push, 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 push. And mostly with these big, these big companies, that's pretty much how they, how they work. Um, so, the pressure that they get from the reps is is a big complaint that I get, and they will make these promises that they often don't follow through like people thought they would. And there's a and I don't want to get all off on, on bashing these companies because there's some really there's some good ones, there's some good people, there's some great products. You just got to sure. know what you're dealing with. Um, but they just don't. Most people, unless they're really seasoned a seasoned buyer and they really understand the industry there's so much to it that they don't understand and one of the ways i I, an example i give is say like you've got a say a guy who's really into hot rods and he likes or guitars and he likes working on them and he likes building them and he likes going to conferences and he likes talking to other people about it there's very few people in this industry that are like that about lasers so they they just know the surface so i love talking to a doctor or somebody who's really knowledgeable about these lasers because we can really get into it and they understand what's going on but but so many people don't and, yeah, I think the biggest, yeah. yeah and i think the biggest thing i see is the 
cash grab methodology, which is that you're going to make a million dollars. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Hey, because what, what we end up doing is, is typically we'll get someone who's had a laser for two months or three months or whatever, or, or had a piece of equipment, let's just say, and their free trial slash um, something has run out. And now they have yeah. nothing. And the bills keep piling up and they're like, I need to get out from underneath this thing. And I yeah. said, well, yeah, that's great, but you're going to really need to, to double down now. You know, people buy the piece of equipment and never think about even marketing it. They're like, oh, well, it's just going to market itself. I'm like, and that, no. That's what, yeah, and that's what the companies will say. Will say, you know, this thing is just, it's good. You know, here's the ROI. You know, if you do 10 a day, you're going to make this much money. And it's so easy because it's such a demand out there. So the companies, in their effort to sell and move on and move a lot of equipment, they will promote that they, they're going to do your marketing. They're going to help you with your marketing. They're going to put all this stuff together. They don't really care that much about that. They're all about selling equipment. And so you may get a lot of companies, you'll get a pizza box full of brochures and camera-ready artwork. And if you're lucky, there may be a marketing person uh, with the company that will help you a little bit. Yeah, so they, they have a launch sequence, right? Yeah. That, that's, they, and so sometimes they get a launch partner or they get a launch sequence to get it off the ground. They have a big, you know, balloons and yeah. festival. And oh, everybody comes in, you get your first 20 customers and you're all set. And then yeah. they walk away going, good luck. That's um, it. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe in some cases we find that some of the equipment manufacturers will tie uh, maybe a, a six-month or a, a three-month program, um, we, we tend to find those come to us every once in a while where um, th these dedicated partners may uh, fall in favor, and then we, we end up with working with uh, a, a couple of, of different reps to help them with their launches and, and do like a 90-day run or, or whatever. But and I think I always... what people... Yeah, I was going to say, what people have to realize is marketing is not their business. Selling lasers is their business and selling equipment. Yeah. So they're going to offer you up something, but it's not like what you do. It's not where you're with them every day. You're watching their business every day. You're consulting with them. You know, you're really helping to guide them. They're going to give you some templates, you know, and some basic stuff. So, so, so we know that sort of there's there's three pieces here. There's the there's the new lasers, right? Which are yes. okay. Go get a fresh new laser. Great. And you've got the money then, or you've got a lease program. Okay, you're on it. It's just like buying a house or a car, right? Or, or right. whatever. Then you've got your sort of middle of the road, which I think is sort of pre, let's say, refurbished or re. And then there's the sort of used, right? So can you talk about those three? Yeah, there's there's places and times when buying brand new is a great thing to do, and then there are times where it makes more sense to buy used or refurbished, you just got to know what you're dealing with and you got to know which ones are better for that. So, for example, some doctors I know in, in, who are in this, been in this business for a while, I know some that own 20 lasers because what their, their attitude is, and they have the money to pull this off, is they want to be on the forefront of whatever that new wave is. So they're willing to pay the top dollar for this new thing and they're going to ride it really hard for a couple of years before a lot of other people get into it. And then they might get something else, you know. So buying new, in that case, if that's your business plan, is maybe a good idea. But you've got to have the money to do that. Um, if it's just a regular laser that's kind of doing the same thing as a lot of different ones and you buy a brand new one, you may just be spending a lot more than you have to. Um, there are now more middle-priced companies coming out onto the market. You just have to know about those companies too, and you have to know you can get service. You have to know, you know, people will take care of you. You, you got to dig deeper, you know, with those. And then on the used market, uh, buying used for people that don't really know what they're doing, it can be a great thing or it can be a really bad thing because. Uh, there are brokers and dealers out there that have virtual inventories. They will tell you they have a device that they don't have. You'll, they'll pay a deposit. Then they try to go find a device that's like that one. And three months later, something shows up that's different. 
And then, but if it's a, like hair removal lasers are great to buy used if you, you know, if you, if you know what you want, uh, because there's a lot of them out there, been around for a long time. If you get a good one, uh, you can save a lot of money on it. Uh, some of the ones that are not so good to buy used are if they have proprietary disposables. So for example, if they have a tip that you have to use for each procedure, well, those are usually chipped to that device. And so if you were to try to buy those, those tips on the market somewhere besides that company, they won't work. Then you're forced to go back to the company and these companies like to do these uh, recertification fees and they can go anywhere from ten thousand dollars to 15 to 20 to, to one of them a big company that i won't name it's thirty thousand dollars for recertification and that's just for the right to be able to buy products from them and to say that your system's recertified so people just have to know and, and every scenario is a little bit different and then there are new buyers and used buyers and some people want the all that comes with buying new you know i want the company I, you know i want the support i want the man i want the warranty i want the uh, uh you know whatever tr training that they get and all that kind of stuff and to whatever degree the marketing is and then you have people that look i just want the best deal on what i can get you know so help me figure out what's a good a, a good system to buy so there's just so many things to know Pe you know people just don't know what they don't know on, on things like this so uh, i have a question i mean when you start dealing with let's say the newer lasers or new, with newer pieces of equipment yeah. what's the typical model that someone should expect to pay for um, and, and what do you see typical is what they'll pay I mean I'm assuming there's a there's a couple of components you know just like you'd buy a car there's something down there's something monthly and then you know there's maybe there's a recoup I, I'm curious on what you see uh, or what people might expect if they're gonna get into this you know I would say the big laser companies you know, on on average, they're going to be charging seventy thousand to two hundred thousand for their devices, and they're right. typically going to come with a one-year warranty. Some of them will come with a two, and that's another that's another whole another subject about warranties. You know, should you buy extended warranties? I, I talked, I was working with a customer recently who didn't realize their warranties came up for two different lasers that they had, and the company was going to charge them twenty thousand dollars a year for their warranties. So they're trying to decide, should I buy this? And so I was trying to help them kind of walk through that. And, and more, more owners, especially the ones like I talked about that have several lasers that know this industry, they tend to not get the extended warranties because they know how they can get these things serviced. And, uh, and just to elaborate on that one customer that had the two lasers, after doing some digging, I found out that I could find them a third party service tech that could service one of them. So they didn't have to buy that warranty for the other one. But the other one that was the most expensive one, which I think they paid $150,000 for roughly, that company made sure that no third party techs could get into it. So they are limited. This is another thing that the big companies do. They will make, they do everything they can to keep third party techs from working on those lasers. So you have to go back to them. And so I told them, unfortunately, you're going to have to buy that warranty because you can't get it serviced because they won't let other people get into the system. And to take it a step further, uh, this happens sometimes where some of these big companies, not all of them, like I said, they're not all, you know, these evil corporations. I mean, they're good people and they have good products and you just got to know. Uh, but some of them, because their service departments are separate. So you've got your sales department, you got your service department. And this is a separate profit center. And so sometimes those service techs will go in and say, we're going to do a routine maintenance on your machine. We're going to come check it out. We're going to upgrade it. What, what they do sometimes, not all the time, they change the software so that those third party techs can't get in and you don't know it or like they could before, but maybe they're losing too much money because there are more and more techs that used to work for these big companies that are now working independently and they know how to work on them and they can be cheaper and they can be faster and you know all this kind of stuff so these companies are see that as a threat to their their profit so they may come in there and change that software where they just they can't get in it you know so anyway well i find it fascinating because what my original thought was and again do you see a typical like payment strategy for the actual laser do, do they work 
with the company themselves? Do they work with a bank? How do you see people paying for this equipment? Because nobody basically has one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of pocket change, you know, walking around, or maybe some of yeah. them. They typically they go through their bank if they've got good credit and they, they want to use that, um, or they go through a finance company, which is a leasing company. And and, and a lot of people get confused about this because they'll ask me, they'll say, "Does this company lease their lasers?" And they think it's a rental. And none of the big companies will do rentals. Not not any that I know of, unless it's a super special thing that they're, whatever they're doing. But I, I rarely ever see that. But people think they do. But there are their lease finance companies where it's a lease purchase. And that, and I would say it's 50, 50. So I, I just was talking to somebody this morning where I hooked them up with a, a med spa financing company because that's what they, med spa, and that's what they were looking for. Um, so they know the business, they understand the technology. If you tell them you're looking to buy a certain kind of device, they know what it is. They probably finance many of them. And, and what's good about those folks, if you don't have the, the funds, you, know, you go to your bank, they don't have no clue what you're talking about. You go to one of these, and if you've got good credit and you've been in business for a couple of years, uh, they can finance you in a day. And they tend to be pretty flexible. So maybe they give you deferred payments. So, and that's pretty popular if, if your credit is good enough. Or maybe you don't make any payments for six months, so you can use that money for marketing and your service and you know all that kind of stuff to build your business. And then payments come in, and, and they have 10% buyout, dollar buyout. They have all these different things. And, and those guys can be really good to talk to uh, because they, they can come up with all these different options to help you specifically with your business. But you're buying it. You're just doing a lease purchase. So, uh, And then at the end of that time, it could be 12 months, 24 months, 48, 72, whatever. It's your machine with a dollar buy it or 10% buy it or whatever you work on. But And there's some tax advantages with that too because you can it's an operating expense. And that's, you would need to talk to your CPA, you would talk to your finance guy. So if people have pretty good credit with their bank, I usually tell them, check both, you know, talk to a lease finance guy, talk to your banker, compare them, talk to your accountant and see what's best. Yeah, that always gets me when I speak with someone and they've made this monstrous purchase and they have this overhead of some huge number that they have to cover yeah. for, the, for the equipment. I'm like, and now they come crying to me, oh, I have no money to market this. I'm like, well, did you ever think that you'd have to actually get patients for this? <laughs> yeah. And I, I have to go into, okay, well, let's, we have to figure this out because you're not going to, you either are going to get buried by this or you're going to have to figure a way out. So it's, yeah. it's fascinating, you know, when you say, I'm sure you probably run into this. And then they, oh, do, time. So, so what happens then? So do they push the laser back? This is what I always. This is where my conversations sort of drop off because I, I sort of when we can't come to a conclusion, I wonder what they do. Do they does this piece of equipment then get back sold back into the market? Does it get taken back? I, I'm curious. Uh, a lot of time, there's been unfortunately a lot of those really expensive lasers that get repossessed. They go into a a, um, a wholesaler, the bank, the bank. They default, and then they work with some of these dealers and these companies that take those repos and they, they resell them. Uh, and the typical reason that that happens is they, they don't understand the business. They spend too much money right off the bat. They don't know how to market it. They don't know how to get new patients in the door. They don't know how to retain those patients and make them happy. So it's really important that they do this smart and, and they really look at their options. So if they spend all their money on two super expensive lasers, well, that's kind of, you know, you better make it work, you know, but you got to have money set aside for your marketing. So a lot of times, this has happened a lot of times where somebody has reached out to me and said, Hey, I want this laser, this laser, this laser, you know, can you help me out? It, you know, and I have all kinds of sources for, for different things like this. And so we'll, we'll find all those and we'll put together what they want and all that. And then they go to their finance source and say all those three devices together tallied up to $175,000. That's what I want. This is what I want to do. Okay, great. And then they go get financing and they get approved for $75,000. So now back to, back to square one. So it's really important people figure out their financing up front. For one, it puts you in a better negotiating position and then you know exactly what equipment you can get. 
because it's harder to finance sometimes for people these days that, you know, in the early days when I got in this business, it, it, you know, if you could fog a mirror, they would finance you. They would give you a hundred thousand dollars, you know, a boom like that, but it's harder now. So you really need to know what your budget is up front and factor in your marketing and all that as part of it. So what do you think now, like, do you see an average, um, so let's just say $150,000 or whatever it is, or, or yeah. 100000 Let's just make a simple number like that. Yeah. Do you see like an average number that people are trying to pay down? Do you do you sort of, when people come to you and say, hey, you know, do they give you sort of a number for a budget that they're expecting to pay? Or is it sort of random? For their payments, monthly yeah. payments? Well, that's where the finance guys can help them out with. These lease, lease finance guys are really good about that because they give them options, you know, and they might even ask them, what can you afford to pay a month? If, and the key is if their credit's good enough and if they've been in business two years. So, um, and if it is, they, they can get really creative because they want the business. And um, so they may say, okay, you need your payments to be $1,500 a month. Let's see if we can do that. And a lot of times you can almost think of it if your credit's good, that you could work it out to be roughly 2% of the purchase price on monthly payments. Yeah. So maybe on that $100,000 laser, maybe you could get $2,000 a month payments, but more than likely it's going to be $2,500, $3,500. But if you stretch it out to 72 months and you do uh, 10% buyout, whatever, you know, you could you know, you could keep it down. Yeah, that was my question was that, you know, from an interest percent, and, and I know you're not the financial person, but I was just curious on what they would charge for interest. Because I'm assuming they sort of have a repo game in their mind, which is that if this doesn't work out, we're going to come back in and just grab it. So, you know, well, they, hate they, 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 they hate it. They hate it. They don't want to do it. Yeah, they don't want to have to pick them up. So, they, you know, that's that's the last thing they want. So so that's why they're, they're more careful about, you know, financing big numbers. Uh, so... Um, Yeah, I mean, you got to make sure that your your payment that you can make your payments and afford your marketing and all the other stuff you got to do to. You know, make so when profit. someone comes to you, so let's say we're, we're I'm uh, I, this is a perfect example. So this morning I'm talking to some young woman, you know, she's in her mid twenties, she's obviously starting to grow and expand her business, and she's mm -hmm. not bought a laser yet now. She's looking to get one, and and I suggest, I said, before you go and go to the top dog, you should get a big, wide view. Do, what, what's the process someone goes through when they come to you? Where are they typically midstream in their decision-making process? Yeah, well, she, she would be considered red meat in the laser industry for the big yes. company. Yes. They're going to be like, oh, man, that's what we want. Because she doesn't know what she doesn't know. They're going to come in with these big stories. They're going to hammer this you know, this laser that's super expensive. It's going to do everything you need to do. You're going to make a million dollars. It's going to be awesome. So she's getting, like the person I talked to this morning and I've been talking to for a few days. We've been walking through a lot of scenarios with her because she's starting up her own med spa in a, a town of about maybe 200,000 people. And there's a few med spas there. She's trying to figure out how to be competitive. She's got all these issues. She's trying to figure out what her budget is. So she was initially going to buy two really expensive lasers, and that was going to eat up all her budget. Well, after we worked through a lot of things, I've got her working with two different companies, and now she's probably going to get five devices with better support that's going to round out her services, and she has a much better sense of what she's getting. Where She literally didn't know so many of the factors that she needed to consider when she got into it. She was just listening to the rep for the company and yeah. she's so glad she didn't just buy it because she would have a hard time. So, so let's talk about that real quickly and we'll do a couple more questions and we'll wrap it because I, this okay. is a fascinating topic. And of course, being in this business and having thousands of campaigns running with thousands of appointments going through our systems every day. Yeah. I always wonder like when the lasers start or, or, or any piece of equipment, like what they, what should they do? Like, what should a typical med spa or aesthetic shop, what, what do you think they should have as opposed to what the rep is saying or as opposed to what the industry is saying where you think that you've seen the best sort of combination? I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I'm just curious on what you might think. 
Yeah, there's there's devices I call them kind of the meat and potatoes, you know, of the of the business. So hair removal is is the most popular, the most performed procedure of lasers. So it's high volume, but it's also very competitive and it's kind of a commodity service now. So prices yeah. are really low. So you've got to have a laser. It doesn't make any sense to spend one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars on a hair removal laser because your prices are going to be low. you're going for volume. And you want that thing to be running all day. So what's nice is some of the companies that people don't know about now that I'm just because I have so many contacts in this industry, there are lasers now that they can get new that are close, relatively close to the price of what used ones are. And so now they can get the two year warranty or the whole deal on a brand new system and all that kind of stuff for a way lower price and they could be more price competitive. But, but the complaint I hear is, people that buy those super expensive lasers and they have this big payment they got to make, but they're like, I don't have the volume for this way. Well, you should have bought it in, in that example, you should have bought a less expensive device, whether it was used or maybe look at some of the other brands or models yeah. that will serve yeah. you, but they're not that high priced. So hair removal, some kind of photo rejuvenation neck up is a big income generator. Of so, uh, IPL and they got to be careful about their IPL. They can, you know, you can definitely burn people with those. Um, so some kind of maybe laser resurfacing, not really aggressive because you don't want the down. People don't want the downtime. So skin tightening, lifting, body contouring, um, vascular. They, they call it dyschromia, uh, vascular and pigmented lesions, and come in there and kind of just clean your face up and all that. People love that and they'll pay money for it. You got to know how to present it. You got to get results. You got to get people excited about it. Um, the last thing I tell people that they probably want to get into in this business is uh, leg veins. Because a lot of people, these laser companies will promote their long pulse YAG lasers for doing, it's like laser of choice for leg veins. Well, it is, but lasers are only going to go so deep, you know, and so with a laser, you can do the branches and the leaves of the tree, but you have to do something else like sclerotherapy to do the trunk of the tree and the roots of the tree. A lot of people don't realize that, and it's real easy to burn people, and it, you've got all the pressure on your legs. You've got all these reticular vessels and feeder valves and all, you know, and people really have to know what to do. So, so for example, like that, it's like save that for later, but you can market it. Say you're going to be getting this laser. Start getting people signed up. Give them a discount when you have it. Start understanding that business. So... Yeah, so neck up, hair removal, uh, body contouring, skin tightening. Um, you know, and there's all kinds of ways to skin those cats. So, right, and there's a, I mean, look, we've seen so many of our practices go from small little shops to monster hundred thousand dollar plus per month recurring revenue, yeah. and yeah. and doing really well with these services. And for sure, you know, it's a, it's usually a mixture of different things and. I had a question for you. Are you doing any other equipment besides the lasers? Are, are there other pieces of equipment that you have? So, yeah, I work with. Well, I don't. I don't personally uh, sell equipment, but I. Right. I have partners that that do. So for me, it's like, what do you need? You know, if somebody's looking to buy new, I can help them negotiate a better deal. I can help them figure that out. If they, you know, are looking for used or looking for whatever, I can help them with all that stuff. Um. So um, it just depends, you know. And, because there's so many variants of a theme for body sculpting, you know, yes. between the different manufacturers and different modalities. That's why I was just curious. I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's freezing, there's heat, there's, you know, wavelength yeah. strategies, there's there's light pulse. There, I mean, there's a million different variations of a the theme that, you know, uh, that go into this. That's why I was curious if you, you helped yeah. with all yeah. of this. So I yeah, so I understand a lot of the other aesthetic devices, energy-based devices for, for aesthetics, so whether it's body contouring or freezing or whatever. So the freezing has been really popular for a long time. Without, now there's about to be some competitors coming in that market to, to make that more interesting. But that alone is not enough because if you're just treating somebody with the size of a hot dog bun, how are you going to tighten that? And if you get uh, shelving or if you get whatever. So usually the people that do body contouring, they have two or three different devices. That doesn't mean they have to start with them. They could start with something with, for example, the lady I was talking about, I've just worked with, she thought she wanted the freezing device and other stuff. Her budget's going to allow her to start with an RF uh, cavitation ultrasound device that's going to fit her budget and get her started. 
And if, as long as she does it right, and they, you know, they know everything how to do this, they're going to build enough clientele where they're going to add the freezing part later. And then they yeah. might add percussion, and then they might add something else, and it builds to where then they, they have this well-rounded uh, uh, you know, group of devices that work. Well, and that's the, I literally have this discussion every day with very, of course, we get a lot of people who are very young in the business, or not necessarily young, but they're, they're naive, I would say is the best way to put it. Yeah, they just don't know what they don't know. Right, but they also have a very limited vocabulary of business and a very limited capability to see the bigger picture, which is that the demand curve is in the market. You just yeah. have to apply the right piece of equipment with the right strategy, right? And and I think a lot of them go in one direction and say, well, I'm just not doing what I expected. And I'm, I always say, but as you grow, you'll you'll be able to afford other pieces of equipment and then you can you can start to you know do multiple services and, yeah. and cross sell and, and bring value to that client from different avenues. And and I think that you probably see this quite a bit with a lot of people yeah. who come to you who, who can't really see the bigger picture of like seeing large facilities with multiple services and, and clients coming in five to ten times on different things, you know, across different service lines. Yeah, and, and, and for example, if their budget is such, maybe they need a platform system where it can do a lot of different things, so, and they can test the water. So it'll do photo rejuvenation, it'll do some, some laser peel, it'll do some skin tightening, it'll do some tattoo removal, it'll do, but it's not ideal. But you can test the water. So a lot of people say, I want to do tattoo removal. Well, it may not be a good fit for them, but maybe they get a platform system where they can do some of that on a limited basis, and if they go, wow, this is really taking off then they build that clientele and then they get a dedicated system so they, they build it it's got to make sense right no it does make sense it's sort of laddering okay one last question and then we'll wrap it um state by state restrictions for uh practitioners and service coordinators and, and people who can run the machines and certifications and what do you, how do you see this uh, in your daily uh discussion with people because Maybe, you know, people who are not necessarily obviously medical doctors or don't have a specific level of um, some sort of uh, acclimation to some level where they have to become in a certain state. Do you see uh, challenges on a state by state basis or is it is it sort of like you see um, uh, an easier way to get people implemented who may, again, we have a lot of nurse practitioners and people who come to us who aren't necessarily, you know, uh, Full grade types of uh, medical levels of, of uh, certifications. I'm just curious on where you see certification layers and these things either hampering people or what they have to do in order to get to the certification level. Yeah, it varies from state to state based on the the state the state board, you know, and what the regulations are in the state. It's board of radiation control or whatever ultimately kind of monitors the laser. Uh, and it varies from state to state. And a lot of times it's very gray. They may say that you have to have a medical director that's reasonably available. You know, what does that mean? You know, can they be fishing out in a lake and you know, get their phone on them? Uh, but they want some kind of supervision uh, to know that the lasers are being handled properly. But the people just have to check with their state board and understand it um, and, and follow the guidelines and, and be smart. There, There isn't... You know, when it, when, you, when it boils down to it, there's not like a cosmetic laser police force that's, you know, knocking down doors trying to check on everybody. It's usually if there's a problem. And um, they, they want to know you're doing this safely and, you know, that there's a medical director if needed or the person's doing it's a nurse or an esthetician or certified, you know, what, what they're doing. Uh, they just want it to be safe. Uh, I had, I talked to an office uh, not too long ago, that had the medical examiner. They told me the medical examiner was coming to pay them a visit, which is usually not a good, not something they feel good about. You know, they're not excited about that happening. Well, they wanted to come in and check and make sure because they had a complaint. And sometimes the complaint is another doctor <laughs> that sees them as competition or something. You know, it's not that you know anybody was hurt. They, they somebody six them on them, and they came in and they were fine. They had a remote. Uh, 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 medical director, but they were charting everything. They were doing everything correct. They were, you know, they everybody was trained properly, and they were happy. They were like, you know, we don't have time to mess with you if you're if you're doing all this, you know, right. But people need to check with their state board 
uh, like I said, sometimes it's a gray area. Um, you know, I think there's two people in the state of Texas that are in charge of enforcing this, you know, so follow your guidelines, be careful, do things right. You're going to be fine, but it's, it's varies from state to state. Gotcha. So, uh, we went through a bunch of, of things here and I, I think what I got out of this is that there's a lot of the things that people might not know that, you know, which will be helpful. And again, they can go to, um, lasercoach.com to, to find you yes. out. Is there anywhere else where they might want to contact you? And then uh, we'll uh, wrap it from there. That, that's the main thing. They could, they could call me or, or shoot me an email at don at lasercoach.com or, or go to my website. My contact information's on there. I, I kind of mostly just put, put stuff on there. And I have blogs on there. I have videos where I'm talking about what's the difference between different lasers. I've got some videos of doctors talking about their lasers. You know, I try to be a resource. So my question for people is, what do you need? How can I help you? I've been in this business. I've seen it from every angle. Uh, and I'm happy to do a, a free call with somebody if they want to call and just talk for 15 minutes or whatever. And maybe I can help them. Maybe I can't. If I, if I can't, I can probably send them a direction to somebody that can help them. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It was awesome talking. I really appreciate it, Don. You've been a wonderful person to sort of be a resource. And again, for you, listener or watcher, Please contact Don before you make a purchasing decision. It'd probably be the best thing you ever do because this is just like a stock market slash, you know, investment that is, yeah, you know, potentially going to be harmful if you don't do the right thing. Yeah, and, and I'm one of the few people out there. I've just been doing this so long. I really just want to be helpful for people and share the information. I'm one of the few people that someone will talk to looking to buy a laser or or an energy based device that where I don't really care what the person gets. I just want to make sure it's right for them it fits their budget they know what it's going to do it's going to serve their needs it's going to treat people the way they need to and they're going to get the support that they need so you know i like to just kind of figure out where people need to go and then just help them with their you know with that that uh, that purchase and support afterwards like yourself if it's marketing or whatever it may be so yeah. 